back everybody. My name is Jo and I'm pleased you've come back to join us again today. I'm waiting for our friend Carlo to arrive. I wonder if you remember he brought to us yesterday quite a complicated task. He had a whole lot of items that his sister had picked up that were sitting on the floor in two different rooms. I'm going to give you a clue. One of the rooms is where people sleep. That's right, it was Carlo's bedroom. And my other clue is actually a place where you can wash things in your house. Actually, that's a bit of a complicated clue because I'm just thinking you can wash things in the kitchen, like the dishes. The second room is the bathroom, and that's where you wash yourself. The third room is the laundry, that's where you wash the clothes. And actually, I've just remembered a fourth room, and that is some people have a separate toilet where you wash your hands. So that's actually a little bit of a confusing clue. It could be one of those four rooms. I wonder if we look at a picture of the basket of objects from yesterday whether we can work out which of those four rooms was the room that Carlo needed to return those belongings to. Let's have a look in the basket. Mm, I can see some pegs, so that's a good clue. And I can see some smelly socks, so that's a good clue. And the last one was the permanent marker or the laundry marker. So I think that's a very good clue. The place he needed to return all of those items to was the laundry. We're really interested to see how that went. So actually, I think I can hear Carlo coming up the pathway singing. Let's listen for him to knock. Fabulous. Carlo has come back to join us today and I can see his smile is even bigger than yesterday. He's also brought with him his backpack. Let's just check your backpack and see what it is you brought to share with us today. Oh, this backpack is really heavy today. What and on earth have you got in there? Oh, Carlo. I'm not sure what Carlo is thinking, so I'm really hoping that someone's written a message for us today in Carlo's communication book. Let's just have a look. Mm. Day three. This note's to you and to me today. Dear Joe and children, Carlo insisted on packing all of his animals in the backpack today. You see, playing with animals and sea creatures is Carlo's favourite thing to do. After he'd finished sorting all the other objects yesterday and putting them away, he spent the whole afternoon playing with his animals and sea creatures, sorting them into different groups and then he did something really special. He created his very own zoo. We are all so busy here at our house working from home and you know what? Carlo is so good at designing his own learning. I actually think his favourite thing to do is to think mathematically. Yesterday he designed something really special. He called it this. He called it the same zoo. He has some rules for the same zoo. There can be no more than five creatures in each enclosure and those creatures must have something that is similar or the same about them. However, there was a problem yesterday because he ran out of time. So I suggested he bring his animals with him today and maybe you can help him to complete his task. 
And today the note comes from not Carlo's dad, not Carlo's sister, but actually it's from Carlo's mum. Right, sounds like we've got a really important task to help you with today, Carlo. Oh, this bag is so heavy, Carlo. You seem to have so many creatures in there today. Let's see if we can count and check how many animals Carlo's bought today. He's bought a very tall giraffe. One. An elephant. Two. Oh, a sea creature. Three. A pelican. Four. A donkey. Five. These animals aren't looking very much the same to me. I think this is going to be a really challenging task today. A beetle. Six. A walrus. Seven. Might have to slide them across in front of you, Carlo. And we might just check our counting as we're going. What were we up to again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven was our last number, so we know so far there are seven in the group. Eight, another beetle. Nine, another beetle. And ten, an oxen. Let's count again. Help me. I'll start you off. One, two, nine, ten. So there are ten in the group, but you know there are actually some more animals in here. We might have to make a, another row in front. Let's start from number one again. One, an ant, two, it's a very deep bag, Carlo. An eagle, three. What? Another beetle, four. A night creature, an owl, five. A turkey, a cassowary, a lion, and a shark. There are so animals, so many animals there I've lost track. Let's start right from the beginning and count. Can you help me? One, two, three, four, five. Keep counting. Ten. I'll help you now. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I was thinking there would be 20, but the last number I said was 19. So we now know there are 19 creatures in this big group. Now our job is really tricky because we've got to help Carlo and he, remember he made for us two rules. It's a same zoo, so we have to find something that's the same about these creatures. And each enclosure can only have one, two, three, four, five creatures in each. Do you know what? I don't need to count my fingers. I know if I'm ever looking for the number five, I can always find it on my hand. The number of fingers on my hand never change. So if I'm ever looking to check the number five, I can use my hand to help me. I've also got something else here that I can use today that will help Carlo to design his zoo. Remember his rule, only five creatures in each enclosure. So I'm going to get some of my maths cards, my number cards, and these cards will help us do something really important, Carlo. 
They're going to help us with something that's really complicated. It's a word you probably haven't heard before. It's called sabotizing. So I don't have to count every time. I can just put the animals onto the spots and I know exactly how many creatures are in that group. I think it's going to be really helpful today, Carlo. All right, let's have a look. I wonder what's the same about these animals. What are you noticing? We could, I think, we could sort by colour. We've done that before. So we could put all the grey animals together. Two. It's another one. Three. Four. Oh, it's another one. Wow. Remember Carlo's rule? Only five in an enclosure. And we know there's one in each dot, so we don't have to count that. We know there's five. So I've got all the grey creatures together. I can also see there are a lot of brown creatures here. So let's make an enclosure for all the brown creatures. The owl the ant, the oxen, the walrus, and the beetle. One on each spot, so we don't have to count. We know there's five in that enclosure. We've got two groups, a gray group and a brown group, and there are five creatures in each. So far, we're doing really well, Carlo. The next card, oh, let's have a look at the colours. This is getting a little bit harder. Maybe we could sort all the blue creatures and put them in an enclosure together. So we've got a blue beetle. We've got the cassowary that has a little bit of blue around its eyes. And we've got the turkey that has blue eyes too. What are you noticing? about that enclosure. That's right, there are two spots left. Let's count how many in that blue enclosure. One, two, three. Hmm, not sure if that's going to work. We've got one to go. So let's move these animals across. And maybe our last group could be the creatures with all the black on them. So there's some black on the wings of the eagle. There's some black on the feathers of the ostrich. There's some black on the hammerhead shark. The pelican has beautiful black wings. And there's some black on the tip of the lion's tail. And there's some fantastic, there's some black on the bottom of the giraffe, so we, we can't put him in because there's no spot left. And remember what Carlo said? No more than five creatures in each enclosure. Maybe we can sort in another way. Move these creatures off. Maybe this time, Carlo, maybe we can have a look at the number of legs these creatures have and sort them out by the number of legs. All right, let's move them to the side. We've got one, two, three, four enclosures. And we're going to count the creature's legs and sort them that way. So let's start with the lion. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you're good at counting in twos, you can use two fingers and we can count a bit quick, more quickly. Two, four. 
we've got room for one more. Ah, two, four. If we sort by the number of legs, we have five creatures and each of them has four legs. The next one we might create is an enclosure for creatures with no legs. That's easy to count. No legs. No legs. No legs. Okay, I think that's all the creatures we have with no legs. How about the creatures with two legs? Two legs. One, two legs. One, two legs. One, two legs. One, two legs. Mm. One, two legs. It seems like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six creatures with two legs. So how many creatures we have left that have one, two, three, four, five, six legs. The ant. One, two, three, four, five, six. The beetle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beetle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another beetle. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. Without even counting, we know we've got five beetles in that enclosure. We've got five creatures with two legs in that enclosure. And we've got one left over. We've only got one, two, three creatures with no legs. Carlo said you can have no more than five creatures, but you can have less. So Carlo's rule says it's okay to have just three creatures. And we've got one, two, three, four, five creatures with four legs. It looks like a fabulous zoo, Carlo. Now we've finished the zoo, I wonder if we can think of a mathematical name for it. What are you thinking? I heard somebody say, this is a good idea, Carlo, the five zoo? What a fabulous suggestion. And I heard Carlo say, what about the same zoo as a name? I think that's a fabulous suggestion as well, Carlo. Before you go home today, I'm going to take a picture of your zoo and send it home to your mum and dad. And you can explain to them all the wonderful mathematical thinking you've been doing today and perhaps you can show them how you made groups of five and sorted them according to the number of legs that they had. Let's send the dot cards home with you today, Carlo, because that's a really good way of you remembering how many creatures belong in each of these enclosures. It would be a really good idea, Carlo, if the children at home had a go at sorting their toys into groups of five. Remember, if you get stuck, you've got five fingers on your hand to help you with that task. I think it's time for Carlo to go. I'm really interested in, to know what he does with the extra animal that didn't fit in the enclosure. Thanks for joining us today. 
We've run out of time for a song, but hopefully we can sneak one in tomorrow. Thanks for all your help today, children. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.